Hey fam, Manga Patid. Welcome back to the video. So today we're gonna learn how to go ahead and color correct and even put your own color grade in Final Cut Pro. So here we go, ready? All right, so example one. We have what we call our video scopes here on the left hand side. And we made that pop up by hitting Command 7. And I wanted to have four different references here. So here on view, I wanted to have four guides. So that's where we got that. And for each of these, I made sure that I got a Luma waveform. So you hit this little icon here, drop that down, waveform, and then select Luma. And here on the right, I left it as histogram and also had that at Luma. Vector scope, this refers to the color. Uh, here it is, vector scope, and also click show skin tone indicator to make sure that our skin looks around the right range. And then I also keep here waveform, but this time it's RGB parade. Okay, with that set, you just have to select our clip that we're going to manipulate. And you know, let's just use this part right here. So I did shoot a wedding, but I don't remember what profile I used. I used the A7 III, but nonetheless, we wanna bring out the most that we can in the image. So we're gonna go here to color inspector and we're going to manipulate the exposure. We're going to manipulate the saturation. And if we can, or if we need to, let's go ahead and get that skin tone right where we can. We don't want our subjects looking orange like an Oompa Loompa, yet we'd also don't want them to look yellow as if they were having liver failure. Okay, so let's click this down over here next to no color correction or no corrections. And we're gonna use color wheels. There's a little bit other options, but right now let's focus on this. We have four different color wheels. On the left side of each of them, we have what they call the saturation control. The higher you bring it up, the more saturated it is, and the opposite is when you lower it down. And then on the right-hand side, there's the exposure tool where you have the brightest parts towards the top, and then the shadows are bringing it down, of course, to the bottom. We have our global, which affects the whole entire image, all the information there. Or you can go ahead and use the other tools, which is the shadows, of course, the darkest parts, the midtones, of course, the middle parts and the highlights, the brighter parts of the image. So right now, I really like how I expose the image. It's pretty fair balance. It's not too bright, it's not too dark. But I do want to go ahead and stretch that information out when I look over here to my Luma waveform. So I like to start on the bottom. So we're going to adjust the right-hand side here of this color wheel and bring it down right where it says that zero line, okay? Yeah, I really crushed the blacks there. Okay, well, don't worry. Now let's bring up the highlights. Just that. Okay, cool. And maybe we can take our image out of the shadows and let's bring up our midtones a little bit here. Just a little bit. Okay, cool. All right, great. This is what it was before. This is what it is now. Before, now, before, now. Great. Now that we got our exposure down, let's bring up that saturation. All right, so bring up that saturation. And as you look here on our vector scope, uh, you'll see that the image or the information, which is that white splotch, is continuing to grow. So let's find a fair balance of bringing up our saturation without everybody looking like an Oompa Loompa. All right here, not too bad. For me, I think the colors look pretty okay. Good starting point. Um, you can find adjust things here if you think it's a little too bright. Maybe I could have brought back down my my midtones. So maybe I just naturally shot in the dark spot. They're near each other, so naturally they're going to pretty much block the light from each other. So they all are shadows in the face. Not the most pleasing look, but nonetheless, it's a realistic image. We didn't have any additional lighting in here. I don't think any lights were on in a church sanctuary. Yeah, when I scroll through the footage here, it looks nice, you know? It's not too blue, it's not too yellow, it looks just right. Again, they're in the shadows. For me, the skin tones look pretty acceptable, but if you wanna go in there and fine tune it a little bit, we should just isolate just the skin on the face. All right, so let's go ahead, hit this drop down arrow, and we'll go to hue and saturation. We'll go hue versus hue, and hit that eyedropper tool. And let's go with the groom here, and let's just touch his cheek right there. So as you can see, when we look here in the color inspector, that it's marked around orange. And let's see if we bring that up a little bit. It's like purple magenta. If we bring it down, it's very yellow, even worse than jaundice look. So again, 
depends where you want it. So don't want it magenta and you don't want it too yellow. So very small wiggle room here. Um, it's Typically I like to get it what it looks like orange, but less than orange. But again, like I said, the image was already okay to begin with. You could have left it alone, but it just shows you what it would look like if I was to manipulate the skin. Not getting too technical, this is pretty much for beginners. If the skin looks good for you, if that's what they would look like in person, that's great. Okay, now let's gray the footage a little bit. Now that we have our image to a certain point that's right in the middle, we can go ahead and add a little bit more extra. You can see in movies that they add like, blues to the shadows and like orange in the skin tones. And although you're like, my skin isn't orange, but because it suits a certain look, that's what they go for. So let's let's play around with the colors here and see what we can get. So if we were going to grade this, right? Cause we just color corrected it. Let's add a new color correction and not touch what we already did. Cause that's our basis. If anything goes wrong, we could just remove the additions. So let's go over here to color wheels. Again, as I was saying, people add uh, teal to the shadows. Let's see what happens when I go to my shadows color wheel and bring it over to the blue. Okay, all right. Too extreme, right? Too extreme, but you can see for the most part, it's manipulating just the shadows as intended. Okay, maybe, yeah, I think teal is probably around there. Somewhere around there. Okay, I'm gonna bring it back. So the farther that our pivot point is away from the center, the more saturation or the more intensity it'll be. And the closer it is to the, to the center, the less it is. To balance out that blue, the opposite side, if you're familiar with color theory of teal or blue is orange. So let's go to the midtones here and we will put it, push it towards orange. Okay. Maybe a little bit more touch orange without it looking too red. Wow. Turned out a little bit better than I intended. Okay, maybe let's bring a little bit more teal to the shadows. Ooh, that actually looks pretty nice. Now we can add another color here for highlights. We can make it yellow. You know, bring a little warmth in there. Ah, okay. I'm revisiting this edit, by the way. It's been years. Ah, okay, yes. All right, so let me play that back. Okay, this is without the grade. This is with the grade. Without the grade, uh, actually, now that I see the bigger screen, it looks like it's a little bit more on the purplish side. But anyway, yeah, with the grade, ah, oh, I like that. I like that. So let's say you wanted to just save this as an effect or save this as a grade here on Final Cut. You could go ahead and hit Save Effects Preset, and you can select this whole thing. If let's say you're shooting in the church, just like I was, if I didn't want to grade each and every individual clip. You either use what they call an adjustment layer, which is pretty much an effect or an effectless clip. It's almost like a title uh, right above your, your clips. You drop your LUT right on top of it. This is not a LUT, okay? Final Cut does not have built-in LUTs, uh, but this is the closest thing to it is by having a effect. And let's just say, let's use a category here and let's just use color. And we'll just put uh, in this instance, wedding color grade, right? Because theoretically we could just use this across all the footage that was shot in the ceremony in the sanctuary here. But let's just say your exposure was wrong or whatever it may be, you would have to add another color correction and manipulate the exposure, the bright parts, the dark parts, the midtones. But if your settings didn't change, if the lighting situation didn't change, you could pretty much use this across the board. If you wanna use it for future projects, you could go ahead and just uncheck the color wheels, which we use for our saturation and our exposure. Over here, the hue and saturation for skin tones, which may or may not be applicable. And this would just be the grade, right? So this is the wedding color grade for whatever you wanna call it. And then you could hit save. So if you were going to go to a different clip, which is also shot in the sanctuary, I could go over here to color. And where is it? Scroll down, scroll down. Wedding color grade here. We found it here and bring it over. All right. So right now it looks yellow. 
Again, this is just a color grade. We did not apply any color correction. We didn't try to make things look white. And of course, uh, you can see that it's still flat. We didn't try to bring out things here. So let's go to our color inspector, go to the color wheel, and let's just do that real quick. And let's bring back our scopes. So we have a reference, Command 7. All right, I'm looking at my Luma wave waveform here. I'm gonna bring this down to zero. So I bring down the shadow, cool. All right, maybe I want a little bit more. Bring up the midtones, no, okay. Well, maybe we'll bring that to, down too. Okay. All right, not bad, not bad. Color wheels. Maybe I can bring this blue down a little bit more and bring the orange up. Yeah. All right, see, drastic lighting change. So it may not be as applicable, You so you'll have to change on the fly. But basically, that's, that's the principle that I use when I color correct and color grade. You expose for the image, or at least you, you manipulate your exposure by getting your blacks down and you're bringing up your whites and make sure that you have your details saved if that's something that you're interested in. If, unless you want a high punchy contrasty look, that's up to you. Or if you even want a faded look, you know, play with the colors, play with the sliders, whatever you like there. And then we're gonna go ahead and bring up our saturation without messing up our skin tones. And then once we get that to a certain look, let's get that white balance dialed in. If we probably missed it a little bit, especially for using a custom white balance and we used it at the wrong setting, you can turn it towards the yellow side or the warm side if you shot a little bit too cool. Or maybe the image doesn't look just right, so we need to go towards the purple tint or the green tint. So. Again, trying to find that balance. And then if let's say you have an older Sony camera where the skin tones aren't that great, um, you could go ahead and manipulate with the hue and saturation just by using the eyedropper tool. And we can go ahead and talk about that in another video. If you wanna see how I get a more filmic look out of my videos, you can go and look at this video right here. Otherwise, hopefully I can make a skin tone video and probably put it here or something. With that said, thank you very much for watching. I hope this helped. If you have any questions, let me know down below. But until the next time, go out there and shoot for the life that matters. See ya.